Welcome back to Take Action News, everybody. David Schuster here. It has happened in the United States Senate. Senators Joe Lieberman, Senators Dick Durbin, and Patty Murray, and Barbara Boxer, they have introduced legislation that would grant Washington, D.C. full statehood, including full voter representation in Congress. It is called the New Columbia Admissions Act, S-3696. It's the first D.C. statehood bill to be introduced in the U.S. Senate since 1993. It would create a 51st state called New Columbia, on the House side, Representative Eleanor Holmes Norton introduced a companion legislation in the House H.R. 265 back in January of 2011, so two years ago. Joe Lieberman gave this quote. He said, it is long past time to give those American citizens who have chosen the District of Columbia as their home the voice they deserve in our democracy. He said, the United States is the only democracy in the world that denies voting representation to the people who live in its capital city. As I retire from the Senate after having had the great privilege of serving here for 24 years, Securing full voting rights for the 600,000 disenfranchised people who live in the district is unfinished business, not just for me, but for the United States of America. Daniel Marins, you're a resident of the District of Columbia. Your reaction to this news? Well, David, I mean, it's too soon to celebrate. I, I, I just, there's been talk of this too much, and uh, too little action, I think, is, is really sort of the long and short of it. Um, We've, we've heard this kind of talk time and time again, I think, in the 1990s. Most recently, as you mentioned, typically Republicans always say, well, it's going to be an automatic Democratic seat. We need to give another district to, like, Montana or Wyoming or Utah. Um, so I think we're, we, have a, we, have a huge, we have a huge fight ahead of us. That's the first thing. But, yeah, absolutely. As a District of Columbia resident, I, I think it's outrageous. And, I, you know, I, I, I think w w one of the interesting dynamics that we're going to be seeing in the coming years is this. <clears throat> Sadly, um, while D.C. was more of a majority poor black city, I would say, uh, there was probably less political power and less political will to get something like this done. So one of the pleasant byproducts, perhaps, of the gentrification of Washington, D.C., is that we're going to see a much more powerful constituency calling for statehood. You know, uh, Mitch Belaski, a lot of folks who are outside of D.C. and Virginia and Maryland may not realize, some of our listeners may not realize that, I mean, right now, I mean, Congress can do whatever it wants in terms of declaring wars or taxes or whatnot, and, and, and our representative can't vote on that. I mean, uh, Eleanor Holmes Norton, she's essentially a shadow representative. Our voices, the voices representing the 600,000 residents, all of us, we're not part of this. We're taxed, and yet we're not represented. Um, so... I mean, I, I guess it's. I mean, I guess I'm asking for your for your view on all of this. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely part of the the challenge that those of us who are uh, who are in DC have in in getting statehood. Is part of it is that most people don't even know this is a problem uh, inside DC. This is the biggest problem for a lot of people. I mean, you cannot run for any sort of public office unless you have an opinion on statehood. And in certain offices, your opinion on statehood is the only thing that matters. Uh, where whether or not you're you're going to be elected for particularly for some of these uh, shadow senator and re representative seats that don't really mean anything. Uh, so part of their challenge is to uh, is to is really just spread the word and let people know that those of us who are in D.C. Um, you know have our, it is literally taxation without representation. We have it on our license plates, um, and it is something that I have in D.C. It is what America fought against the British to get rid of is to not um, be forced to do this, and it really puts D.C. In, in a horrible spot. I mean, it's. Um, I, I can't say that we have uh, exactly proven that we DC government is not the most is not the most sane. And so I don't know, can't say that we've proven that we deserve something like that from a uh, experience standpoint. But from American citizens, we completely deserve that, and we are hindered by the current situation that we are in um, by you know by the federal government, where literally our state government, where everyone else in the country, um, you know, outside of our our city, you know, sort of municipal. Uh, government, our state government is the U.S. federal government. However, mm -hmm. we have no say, absolutely no say, in that federal government. We have no vote. I mean, even one out of um, you know 500 or whatever is is would be would be better than nothing. But uh, here in D.C., we have absolutely nothing, and we have to pay the you know federal income tax uh, to boot. Yeah, I mean, I'm sitting here in New York City, and anybody who comes into New York City from New Jersey or from Connecticut, uh, they have to you know they pay a toll to sort of uh, come into the city and and. And you know, just like like in D.C., I mean, you got folks from Virginia and Maryland who come in. More than a million people come in each day for work, 
and they get to use city fire services and police and security and all that sort of thing. And D.C. can't charge them for it. I mean, the Washington, D.C. does get some lump sum from the federal government, but we don't get to uh, you know, sort of fight and say, hey, give us more or whatnot. I mean, we can't, we can't charge people who are coming and using city services. But then putting all that aside, a couple of key facts, and I hear you know, Republicans say, well, wait a second. You know, what about D.C.'s population? Well, the fact is D.C. has a larger population than one state. We've got more college graduates than I believe it's four states states. We've got more people who serve in the military than five states. And our tax base, the amount of money that we contribute to the federal government in terms of just the income tax is larger than 10 states. So by all of these metrics, there should be statehood for the District of Columbia, right? As well as the, the D.C. You know, population used to be larger than it is. So just because it is currently at about 600,000 doesn't mean that, you know, potentially with a lot of the, as Daniel mentioned, there's a lot of uh, gentrification and different parts of town that are putting in a lot more apartment buildings, more high density units. You know, there's a reason for, you know, I think a, a reasonable expectation for population in D.C. to go up. I mean, part of our problem, though, I think has been uh, as D.C. residents deciding what do we want to do. Um, there's a lot of, uh, I think this bill would be the best of, would, would be the thing that we would most agree on becoming our sort of semi, you know, our, our autonomous state uh, with the Federal District of Columbia just becoming the mall. Uh, but there's also people who are large proponents of uh, what the, would, would in this proposal be called New Columbia, including that in Maryland. And, you know, giving us Maryland's two senators and representatives, you know, to fit the, uh, you know, population of D.C., uh, so some people feel like that would be an easier path towards recognition and towards being able to have some sort of vote in Congress. There are some people who would just say, get rid of income tax, you know, and make us more of, of a territory like Puerto Rico, um, you know, where we don't have to pay the tax and we don't, you know, we don't have a say either. So, uh, you know, that's part of our problem is we can't stay unified on, on what we feel and what, how we feel like we should move forward. Uh, but this is definitely, I think, a unifying path that, that would be great. It's all just, uh, you know, Will the Republicans support it? They're the most recent, uh, when, when we had control of all three houses, there is uh, supposed to be a House bill uh, introduced that never made it that would have added a congressman uh, from both uh, Washington, D.C. and Utah. Uh, the state of Utah feels slighted because of all their Mormon missions that are out of the state at every time. They feel like that during the, during the census time, they actually had a larger population that would have warranted an additional uh, congressman from their district. And so that seemed to be a possible um, a, a, a possible. Um, uh, a possible uh, 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 compromise of being able to have add one from each district, but that actually seems very unconstitutional from Utah's end to just you know give give them one as well. So um, so so we'll see. Daniel Marin, it's, called, be, it's, 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 it's called absentee ballots, Utah. <laughs> Figure it out. You know, this is just another harebrained scheme to give a lily white Republican state <laughs> an extra congressional district to balance out liberal chocolate city Washington D.C. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it, David. It's just a classic example. Republicans like the right to vote unless it's people of color, period. Well, I think it's also part of it is, is a messaging thing where if you say, you know, if you, if you tell someone who has no clue, you know, if you just tell any American, a Tea Party or whoever, do you support taxation without representation? I challenge you to find someone who says that is okay. But well, then you well, say, well, D.C. doesn't, you know, that's the case in D.C., and but they can't rectify those two situations of what, one what is I, fair and one is not. What, what I find is that people are literally just in denial when you talk about it with them. Mm. Uh, they say, well, "Well, what do you mean? I mean, there, there's got to be some kind of a catch, you know? What, what do you mean? Yeah. What do you mean the people of D.C. can't vote? That's that's a joke, right? That they that they don't have a voting representative representative in Congress. That it's so unjust. How could it possibly be true? And tell them, well, you know, there are things in the world that are really unjust that are that are still true, and uh, you know, this was this was obviously due to a technical thing, uh, which is to say, they didn't want to give the area where the government uh, serves. It's like as if the government is kind of, uh, you know, I guess then double dipping or mm -hmm. I don't know, representing uh, for itself or, or what have you, uh, and and that was prior to the city existing outside of just the federal government buildings. Well, um. um I agree with both of you, and, and one thing that I, I want to point out, and that is uh, Joe Lieberman, on the one hand, on the one hand, I, I salute Joe Lieberman and the other senators for introducing this legislation, but as Joe Lieberman pointed out, he has been in, in serving in Washington in one capacity or another for 24 years, and then it's been since 1993, which is almost, what, 19 years since this was introduced in the U.S. Senate. Joe Lieberman 
Where were you? What happened to you? If this was so important to you, why introduce it just a couple of days before the Senate goes out of session? And oh, by the way, the Senate is sort of occupied right now dealing with this thing called, I don't know, the fiscal cliff, the Bush tax cuts. You could not get anything like this to even be considered at this time of year. So if it really is meaningful to you, Joe Lieberman, you should have done it years ago. You should have done it at a time when the Senate could have taken it up. I don't know, maybe after Eleanor Holmes Norton introduced this in the House in 2011. That might have been a good time to introduce this legislation because then the residents of District of Columbia, all of us in D.C., might have actually said, hey, Joe Lieberman's actually doing the right thing. He's not engaged he could have in saved his legacy. Stunt. He could have yeah. saved his legacy. Instead, his legacy is one final political stunt from Joe Lieberman. Look, at least Joe's on the right side of this issue at the end. But it's meaningless at the end. It doesn't do anything right now. <sighs> All right. Joe if Lieberman, I, you know. Look, Shoots I'm, to your pissed, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm still going to smile and say hello to Joe Lieberman when I see him walking around Georgetown or whatever. I, I, look, he's still. I'm still going to be friendly. I just, you know, I just wish these people would do these things at times that, where things can actually get done. Take action at a time when people can actually take action on this stuff. Daniel Marins has how it should be when Take Action News continues after this.